Hey, this is Cool Trains in Montreal, and I just wanted to show off a few more freight cars and my uh, locomotives and cabooses on this little test track. So here what I have running on this test track is a CN locomotive and a Point St. Charles caboose. So obviously it's small layout, so I'll just be switching it back and forth. It'll be running on this one energized track right now. But I just wanted to show off here the locomotive itself. This is a lifelike, um, or a Atlas rather, locomotive. And uh, it came in what's called the uh, Zebra Stripe or Sergeant Stripes. And this is a CN uh, paint scheme that was very popular in the 70s and 80s. And my, from my way of thinking, it's one of the most handsome uh, paint schemes that CN has come up with. Uh, this was also the paint scheme that uh, their 1961 passenger trains were uh, in. And I think this is probably done uh, as a response to their black, great, greatly black locomotives being hard to see in the dark uh, when they're crossing uh, train tracks, uh, when they're crossing um, um, public crossings at night. So, I mean, you can't miss this uh, in the dark. <laughs> it's red and black and white. You can't make it any more. Uh, it's safety stripes even. So, okay. And um, this caboose, which I really like, it's uh, a model from, uh, it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the company that makes it now. It's a Canadian based company. Um, anyways, uh, it's a really nice model. Uh, it uh, does light up too. When I move it here, it's got lights in it, and the, the faster it goes on a DC system, the more the lights show. Um, but if you had this, I think, I, I don't think this actually runs on, uh, you could put a decoder in it, I suppose. Uh, the track is pretty uh, dirty, so I guess that's why it's flashing like that. If you give it a little more juice, the lights come up a little better, and when you close up, when you close up on it, yeah, the lights are, you can see bulbs in there and whatever, but as far, as far as the caboose goes, it's a perfect or near perfect model of the Canadian National Point St. Charles caboose, a uh, rebuild program uh, that built these cabooses back in the early 70s, and they ran pretty much until the 90s, I guess, because uh, in 1985, uh, cabooses were um, declared surplus. They weren't really needed much except for backward moves. So the CN had a huge amount of these, and you still see these today actually running around. Um, not so much running around on the tracks, but probably as you know, private cars or as smaller railroads will have gobbled them up. So they won't say CN, but they'll say something like uh, um, New Brunswick Eastern or something like that. And they'll be, you, they're very um, easy to spot because they have these giant windows on the, on the ends. And uh, it has the... Uh, the, the wide vision kind of um, cupola on the top there that kind of juts out a little bit. And it also has those double, um, what do you call it, S stove pipes or chimneys on it. So you don't see these much anymore uh, running on uh, uh, running on, on railroads uh, in service, but uh, they are still around. And uh, a lot of them are maintenance away cars now, actually. So yeah, this is what it used to be. So um, I have a few other things to show. Some people will really uh, enjoy this uh, Simpsons truck. Uh, this is N-Scale, I believe uh, Athern, that's the company, uh, made these a little while ago. I was really surprised to find that some of these trucks were painted in Canadian prototypes. And in the back there, you'll see one that says Kalmbach. Um, some people will recognize that name as the publishing company for Model Railroader. And... Um, yeah, I bought that because it was cheap and also because it's it has a little bit of ironic ironic uh, meaning to it. Uh, being one of those kids that liked to read Model Railroader magazine back in the day. So I can show off a couple more railroads. Uh, so the first one I want to show off here is a little hopper car with the Santa Fe on it. The Santa Fe is very important because this railroad is the precursor to the Burlington Northern Santa Fe that you see today. And you will see a lot of these ghost cars running around. Um, these small cars, these, uh, um, 
two bay uh, hopper cars. They're PS1s, I believe. Uh, they're Pullman standard cars. You won't see these too much anymore. They're more of a 1960s build. But just to show you that there, there are cars still running around with this Santa Fe uh, lettering style on it. Uh, the next one here is a 50 foot box car lettered for the Ann Arbor system. This is a Michigan based uh, railroad. I love the orange. Uh, this railroad obviously doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it was in the 80s and 90s an independent railroad. Uh, I don't know if it actually exists anymore. I have to check. But um, in the 70s and 80s, you used to see these cars because a lot of these smaller railroads had an incentive to buy their own cars and then rent them out in a per diem kind of scheme. So, um, yeah, this is really nice with the orange and you have this like lake ship kind of logo. I really thought, and this, this, this car, I've had this forever. Um, when I was 17 or 16 or maybe 15, I bought this car. So it's an old like roundhouse kit. Not even a kit, basically, because it's just a shell and a chassis, and yeah, it's it's an older kit, and it it still has, still holds up for me, anyways. Um, yeah, it doesn't have the greater detail on it, but you know what? I still like how it has the reporting marks there, the little black and white boxes on it, and this had a lot more detail than a lot of more a lot more cars did at the time. So moving on here, this is the Chessy system. It's the precursor railroad to CSX. CSX basically took Chessy System and a few other railroads you'll see in a minute and put them all into one holding company. And what I really like is the yellow what stands out and the little cat. And I did have a cat for 18 years uh, named Chessy and he was an orange cat. And I guess the orange was because when you see the, the, the cat here on a car like this it's yellow. Yes the Chessy cat wasn't yellow it was like a gray and a two-tone gray or whatever from the back in the Chesapeake in Ohio days but I just like this car I like the Chessy system in general you'll see more Chessy system uh, as things roll out but I just love this symbol see this is a good example of how railroads took pride back in the 70s and 80s and um, yeah they, they, they came up with some really interesting logos that you just don't see anymore all right and I will move the CN locomotive out of the way so I can show this next one. This is Seaboard System. This was a merger between Seaboard Coastline and a bunch of other little railroads, eventually taken over by CSX and merged into CSX. But for maybe only three years, it was, uh, you know, Seaboard System. And I just love this logo. It's just really interesting. They put two S's together and made it kind of like, like a flag. It's just really neat. And it's just another example of like a 1980s yeah, up a logo that showed pride with what they did. And uh, this, I'll have to move the locomotive again. Uh, right there, that's DTI. Okay, so Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton. Now this railroad is a CN affiliate and a very small one, a very small component that used to run from, um, well, it was in Ohio, basically, and it was a kind of a bridge line. But uh, what I want to show is a lot of these um, CN-based um, companies had similar logos, if not already if not already set up as similar to what uh, CN was doing with their wet noodle. So then I'll go here to DWP, which is another similar CN-based railroad. You'll see these cars running around uh, in Montreal as kind of ghosts. Um, there are, I think, locomotives running around with DWP reporting marks. And uh, they were yellow door cars. These were for pulp wood and these were for paper products. And uh, that's why I say you'll see, see these still running around today in the Montreal area sometimes as very old. Uh, the DWP might be a little faded and everything, but it's still there and it's still, still visible. Another one still visible is this Central Vermont CV. You'll see there it's very similar to the other car. Central Vermont is their Vermont affiliate uh, for CN. They used a similar uh, Central Vermont CV noodle, similar to the Canadian National one. And uh, yeah, my dad actually worked uh, for um, Canadian National and uh, he worked on the Central Vermont. He had to commute uh, or whatever, um, go down to Vermont several times a month, I guess, and uh, work with them. 
And uh, yeah, these cars, they mimic the Canadian National in that they had the yellow doors to denote uh, wood products and stuff like that. So same car type as the other one, similar. And then we come up to the last one that I have here right now today, and that's uh, Wisconsin Central. So Wisconsin Central is a regional railroad that uh, it was at first a part of Sioux Line, and then that railroad got um, it, it got rolled into the uh, the Sioux Line, and then later on Sioux Line sold off a lot of their old Wisconsin Central holdings, and uh, Wisconsin Central became its own railroad, and um, as an independent railroad, it lasted until 2001, I believe, when CN bought it, and this is the company logo that they came up with again an, another company that tried to take or show tried to show some pride in what it was doing and it had you know graphics on these box cars and you'll still see these box cars today a lot of them they have not been repainted by CN uh, and that's why I see the, these are probably the most prevalent of the uh, 80s era uh, box cars still kicking around in their in their former uh, glory paint scheme and uh, that's pretty much it. Again, this is the same uh, layout that I've been using as my test track. And again, this layout, this um, this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to end it soon, and then I'll do another video of some of my locomotives. And uh, but I did want to feature this really nice caboose. It's it, I have two of them, and uh, they are really really cool, and they are um, one of the very few examples in N scale that I have of actual cabooses that are pretty pretty close to prototype. A lot of them are compromises because in N scale it's harder to produce exact copies of something. What they'll do is they'll take a copy of something that's for one railroad and uh, it'll be good enough for some other railroad. But uh, in this case this is a very CN specific uh, prototype and uh, yes I'm very happy to have them and I'm very happy to run them alongside my CN um, locomotives. So thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. And if you enjoyed this uh, series, what I'm going to be making a series, please subscribe to Cool Trains in Montreal. Have a good day.